One of the things that has held true over the course of the last few years is that I prefer native applications. When it comes to my workflow, if your application isn't a native application, and I, what I mean by that is that it does just the thing that you're supposed to do. It's like not a browser or something. It can be an Electron application, but what I, if it's a do, if it's a to-do application, I want it to be a to-do application. I want it to have some ties into the operating system, you know, notifications and the ability to actually function as the application as it was meant to be, right? It's not a web, t like a tab in a browser, right? That's what I mean by a native application. And for, for years, that's what I preferred. I would prefer to have a dedicated app for whatever it is I'm using, a to-do application, a Mastodon application, whatever, you name it, I would prefer to have it in a native client. Probably the biggest example of this, and I've talked about this one on the channel many times, is email. I almost certainly will not use email at all if I don't have a native client. It's just the case because webmail, at least in my experience, has universally sucked forever. Like Gmail doesn't do it very good and, and they probably do it the best, like Hotmail, Fastmail, all of them. I don't care for webmail at all. I just don't. One of the biggest reasons why, just to kind of meander into that for just a second, is that I have multiple email accounts. I have my YouTube account that, you know, controls this channel. I have a personal Gmail account, which I'd hardly ever use anymore. I have a Google for work account that I use for my actual work. And I have a couple others that I occasionally check in on, right? I have a whole bunch of email addresses and I would, I do not want to have to have a tab open for every single one of them. That just, no, that just is bonkers, right? I like tabs. I'm a tab hoarder, but I don't want to have that many tabs open. So having a native application for email, I can then have all of those things in it, you know, one application, a lot of times if it has a unified inbox, I'm like really super happy. And that means all of my email just goes crammed into one place and I can triage and stuff, whatever I need to do very easily. But there has been a consequence over the course of the last few months of me using a desktop environment. I'm not as attached to native applications as I once was. I'm not 100% transferred over yet, just to be clear about this, but there are several applications now that I actually prefer to use in a web browser compared to a native application. And it's for a few different reasons and that's what I wanna talk about today. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Let me show you some of the things that I actually have transferred over into using a web browser. So let's go ahead and take a look at my desktop here. Now I am in i3 for those of you who are going to ask me what desktop environment I'm in. I'm in, this is i3. So first off, I've begun to use Plex. I've talked about this again on the channel. They do have native applications, but they're all just covers for web app anyways. So I got into just using it in the browser. Not a big deal. I I have basically started using this for all of my music. So, you know, if I'm sitting here listening to Buck Cherry or whatever, I just listen to it in a web browser and it works fine. Now, I do still like to have Plex Amp available on my computer because sometimes I want to listen to music uninterrupted and Vivaldi interrupts my music all the time with stupid animation or notification sounds. Now I can turn that off, but then I never hear the pings from Discord. So it's a mixed bag there. So sometimes I still use Plex Amp, but most of the time when I'm you know watching a movie or I'm listening to, to TV or listening to music, I do so here in the browser. And I also use Tidal here in the browser. I don't have it open right now, but when, when I'm not listening to my personal music collection and I'm, you, you know, I'm just testing out Tidal, I will use that in the browser as well, even though it does have a dedicated Electron application that I could use. I even have it down, I have it installed, I just don't use it. Probably the biggest change has been this one here. I am, have never been a big fan of Discord in terms of their native application, because it is an Electron application. It does have its problems because it is an Electron application. But I always preferred to have it there because voice chat worked better, uh, video chat worked better, the notification system worked better, and it just seemed to work better. But 
that's no longer true. It works really well in a browser these days. Video chat works well, audio chat works well on Xwork and on Wayland, which is good. Uh, I haven't had weird Wayland problems when I was on Wayland with the browser version. So using it here has been really good. Now there are some limitations like you can't edit the, the key bindings here in the browser. That's disappointing. But other than that, I haven't noticed any changes and it just works really well. So. Discord probably is the biggest one that has led me to start using it in the browser than using it in a, a dedicated application. Another one, and I don't, I can't show you this because of of a confidential information and stuff like that. But I have my all my to do list application in the in a browser tab on another screen here, and I also have my email. So I've I've switched over to Proton Mail for my primary email provider for all of my personal stuff. I still have my Google stuff because of because of work and stuff and the YouTube channel, but I forward the vast majority of the non-work stuff anyways over to my Proton account. Now I'm gonna be making another video about Proton. I'm not at all happy with it, <laughs> like at all. Some of that is because of webmail. Webmail still is one of those things where I really don't like it, but out of all of the webmail that I've tried, Proton actually does a pretty good job. And one of the reasons why is it does allow you to have multiple accounts all at once in one unified inbox. That's good. And that's cool. And it would be unusual for me if it didn't allow me to do that. So I have started to use Proton in the browser. Now, some of that is because I've been forced to. The Proton Bridge is just not a good application. I'm glad that it exists. And if you can get it running, I'm very happy for you. I got it running, but it just did not work very well. So I've been using in the web browser the Proton Mail, and it's also been very good. So my primary applications that I use on a, any given day, I now use in a browser. Now, there are obviously a few exceptions like OBS and Audacity and Vim and stuff like that. Those things are still dedicated applications. But other than that, I've spent more time in the browser over the course of the last probably month or so, maybe even longer than that, than I have in any time in my life. Because previous to this, like I said, I was a native application guy. Like, that was my thing. Like, I refused to use web apps, like, completely. But now that's changed. Now, I, I've been thinking about why this has changed. There, there have been a few reasons, I think, and there are probably more than the ones that I've thought of, but there have been a few reasons. First, as I mentioned at the beginning, part of it was because I switched to a desktop environment there for a little while. I used GNOME for a little while, then I used KDE for a few months. And one of the, the consequences of that was I stopped using workspaces. And that means that I had to really tone down the amount of windows I had open. Otherwise, it was a bloody mess. It was horrible when I had all of these native applications just all over the place, right? So by having just a couple instances of my browser up and running and having tabs of those applications open instead of dedicated applications, it solved some of that window clutter. So that's part of the reason why. Another reason why is when I was trying to go back to a window manager, I was trying to go back to Hyperland. And Hyperland has this really weird, stupid, insane, idiotic bug. And I'm sure it only happens to me, so I haven't even bothered reporting it. Because there's no one has this stupid monitor set up like I have, so it wasn't, wouldn't be worth the, the trouble. How are they going to test it anyways? But that's beside the point. I have three monitors, as I've talked about before. Or two monitors, one of them acts as two monitor two monitors, one acts as you know a split monitor, whatever. Right? And this bug, for whatever reason, in Wayland, two monitors function perfectly fine. The third monitor it will show all the stuff, the mouse moves around, uh, but it won't register any click events or the keyboard. And it's always just one monitor, it's always the same monitor, and it's always an electron application. So when I was using dedicated applications, I was, you know, using Discord, which is an Electron app. I was using Todoist, which is an Electron app. I was using uh, the Proton email uh, client, which is an Electron app, right? All of these Electron apps I would usually put up in the top monitor, you know, because that's the one that's kind of the hardest for me to read because, you know, up here and, you know, whatever. The mouse and the keyboard just won't work in that in that monitor. I don't know why. It was really weird. I can move the application down to the lower monitor and it would work fine. So it was a stupid bug. So that's another reason why I was like, you know what? If I use, use this in the browser, will it work? And it did. 
Now, I have since transitioned back away from Wayland. I've had have other Wayland issues. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Everyone loves my my, my Wayland rants, so I might as well do that again. <laughs> yeah, I'm an Exorc shill again. Who, who knew that was going to happen? Raise your hand. Anyways, I, I knew it was going to happen eventually. Anyways, the, the, the point is, is that I'm back in Exorc, so I don't have that particular problem. But during my little bit of time with Hyperland, I decided I was going to use this in the browser, and it kind of stuck. Along with going the, the desktop environment thing and all the stuff, those are the, some of the reasons why this has happened the way that it has. Another reason why is just that the web apps have kind of become parody, and one of the reasons why that's true is because all of the dedicated native applications that I was using were basically just browser tabs anyways. You know, they're Electron apps, which is just a wrapper for Chrome. And that's what they all are. And if you use them in the browser in a browser tab, they're basically functioning the exact same. Now, do they have the same integration with the operating system as a dedicated app? Not always. Notifications is really weird because if you put them all in your browser, all of the notifications come from your browser. So it kind of can lead to some confusion, especially if you color code your notifications, which I did in a lot of times when I was using Dunce, right? So it's a little wonky because of that, but I haven't had that big of a deal because most of the time I don't pay attention to the notifications anyways. I'm listening for the sound. And, you know, if I see a sound, like I know what the sound for Discord is. I know what the sound for like Mastodon is. I know what the sound for Proton is. You get the idea, right? So I've kind of moved past that as a problem and it's worked out fine. Now, another reason why I've decided to do this is that Vivaldi has awesome tab management. So it allows me to kind of have workspaces within my browser to kind of maintain an, an organized existence. And this really helped when I was in a desktop environment because it allowed me to be much more organized. I have a social workspace where I have all my social apps. I have one for work. I have a whole bunch of others, right? And it allows me to organize those things really well. And that has allowed this transition to go much more smoothly than it probably otherwise would have. Now, now, it has meant that I have a ton of browsers open at any given time. Usually two, sometimes three. When I'm doing the podcast, or when I did the podcast last, I had four instances of Vivaldi open. Now, that's not great on the memory, but I have plenty of memory, so I'm not too worried about that. But it does, it can because they all look the same. They all look like a browser, lead to some confusion, and they don't, you know, because there's no separation in terms of visual. So, like, I have to really pay attention in my mind where things are supposed to be and what they're supposed to be, especially when those tabs are going to change. So, like, on my social workspace, which I always have on Workspace 9 of my Window Manager, I have Discord and my Mastodon, and I usually, that's where I put my music as well. Depending on what tab there is active, it's going to look different. So, I have to know know what those tabs are open and where they're open. So it does take some mental organization because the browser itself is going to look basically the same. Another downside that I've that I've just kind of decided to live with is that browsers have a lot of Chrome with them. And what I mean by Chrome is it has a lot of UI. You know, there are tabs, there's like a tab bar there, there's an address bar, there's a bookmarks bar there, right? If I'm using a if I'm using a website panel or whatever, that that'll be open. All this extra cruft on the screen does take away from the stuff that can be shown inside the application itself. That's a problem, but one that I again have decided to overlook for the time being. It it I, I don't know. I, I It may drive me back to some native applications eventually. I don't know, but it hasn't bothered me too much now, but I still, it, I notice it all the time. So like, I don't quite get as many Discord messages on window as I used to because there's extraneous stuff in Vivaldi that has to be shown on the screen. It's not a big deal. I just, you know, scroll a little bit more, but still it's something that, you know, has played around in my mind. I've also tried to, or at least I've considered to disable like the, the tab bar because you can do that in Vivaldi. I've, I've, I've thought about disabling the address bar. You can do that. I can turn the bookmarks bar off. I could just go completely chromeless, but I also use the address bar all the time. I think I'd be confused as fuck if I was actually running this thing without tabs open all the time. You know, it would be really weird, right? So I may have to end up having to play with how that works, but that's probably one of the biggest downsides of this is that it all they all look the same and the Chrome stuff around the window does sometimes get in the way. So 
in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you also use a lot of web apps or are you still someone who uses the native application? And I should just take one second to mention that on the, the mobile phone, I'm still all about native applications because there, the tie-in with the operating system is really super important, being able to run in the background, being able to send act to actual system notifications, things like that. All that stuff can't be done very easily by a web application, so native applications where it's at, where it can actually tie into the APIs and stuff, especially on, on the iPhone. So it's a whole different ballgame on the, on, the, on the mobile side, so... There you go. Anyways, that's it for this one. Again, comments in the comment section below if you have any thoughts on this. I can't believe I actually got 20 minutes out of this topic or near there. So hopefully I can edit that down just a little bit. Anyways, if you want to follow me, you can do so on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also support me on Kofi or YouTube. Those links will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly, honestly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. If you too would like to support me on Patreon or on Kofi, again, those links will be in the video description. You can also head on over to the shop, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of merch, all the proceeds for which go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you all so very much for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.